Yo YouTube, what is going on guys? So today I am out doing a time lapse. Gosh, my exposure is all over the place because it is like super bright. We're in the heat of the day, but the clouds just looked so awesome today that I was like, I really wanna go out and get a time lapse for these guys. And the cool thing about Panasonic cameras, of course, is that when you time lapse with them, you can have an option at the end of the time lapse to just convert all of the JPEG images straight to an MP4, which is really cool because then you just get a video file for basically no work, you don't have to do anything, but what if you wanna take those super awesome data-rich raw files and actually make like a really professional time-lapse? And say you don't wanna spend an arm and a leg on software. Well, we are going to cover that today, so, I'm going to finish this time lapse and then we will bust home and finish the rest of this video in the studio and we will talk about how I do my more professional time lapses. But anyway, let's get finished with this time lapse. What do I believe? What makes me feel it? All right, guys, I just watched the preview of the time lapse, so like the little MP4 rendered version, and dang, it's looking super good. So let's uh, bust on home and then we'll go through the rest of this process. But anyway, already very pumped. You keep blowing me out, I keep holding you in. All right, guys, and we are back, and I've got to be honest with you, it's not even the same day. It's not even the same weekend, and to be honest with you, I don't even believe it's the same week. I think I went out and shot the first half of this video like two weekends ago, maybe? One, one, or maybe no, it was just this weekend. It might've just been this weekend, but anyway, we're back. We're back, we're back, we got to it, and we're gonna do the second half to this time-lapse video. So of course, the most important part is the first half, and I didn't really go over the technicalities on the first half. There's probably a lot that I could have gone into there. Um, so let's maybe do like a quick crash course. I mean, it would have been better if I was more interactive with the camera, but let's just talk through it right now really quick. We'll just rapid fire, Jake Felzine style, get this out, and then we'll hop on over and do a little screen share and I'll walk you guys through the software that I'm using to do the final part which is the edit, which is really important. But anyway, guys, Jake's crash course into how to do time lapses. Now, again, I have Panasonic cameras and they make it absolutely a breeze. Everyone I've ever owned has always had a mode to just flip it into time lapse. You set how far apart you want your picture taken and you set how many pictures you want to take. It tells you when it's gonna be done. It's beautiful. Um, I'm usually doing anywhere from a half hour to an hour time lapse. The one that you guys are about to see me edit was for one hour, so I believe I did like 400 pictures every 10 seconds or something like that, and it was roughly an hour long um, and made the clouds move really fast, looked super cool. But then of course, once you do that, you have the next important piece, which is very important as well, which is to make sure you are shooting manual mode. Doesn't matter what you choose or how you choose it, but you want your shutter speed, your ISO, aperture, white balance, all of that to be locked at one particular exposure setting. If you don't, you're gonna get that awful flicker that I've gotten in plenty of my videos, even by just having the white balance set to automatic, sometimes it would change slightly, and it's really distracting to watch. You don't wanna shoot with anything changing. Now, I know there's a lot of like photographer, videographers who do day to night time lapses. I personally need to learn a lot more how to do those because I have not done them because I've always, like if I do a sunrise, I always just expose 
knowing how bright or thinking how bright the sun is going to be and trying to expose accordingly and then bringing up those shadows and post which we'll talk about but if you were doing like a full day tonight stars shining in the sky and then up comes the sun like that seems like an exposure nightmare um, so I should probably watch a video on that. If I had to take a guess, I think they would change their settings. It's just that they are shooting pictures so far apart that maybe they're able to actually make it look like they gradually do change the settings in a way that's pleasing. I don't know. Yeah, it would be really interesting to learn. Of course, if you guys have comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to probably be diving into that next because this deep dive into time-lapse videography has been just so much fun. But anyway, that's the crash course on into how to shoot a time-lapse. We're getting into the part that I really wanted to touch on today, which is the free software and how I edit the pictures afterwards and then throw it into basically the time-lapses that you guys have been seeing. So let's uh, dive on over to the computer. All right, guys, so we are over on the computer. Let's start our screen record and let's just dive on into it. As you guys can see, I have pulled up the folder. I'm gonna put this entire time-lapse in one specific folder. You can see here from the JPEG versions of the pictures, because I always shoot JPEG and RAW, mostly so it's easier to preview my files. But anyway, you can see here, I definitely underexposed this entire cloud scene, because I really wanted to preserve the detail in my highlights. And while it doesn't look bad, like that's not a bad photo, it's just not as vibrant as we want it to be. But of course we have 400 photos here going on and we wanna get all of them and we want them to all look the same. So the first thing that I do, click on one of the raw files right here and I say open with Darktable. Now I've talked about Darktable in the past um, and really I probably should do more videos on it. I absolutely love using it and to any of you who are new to photo editing or video editing, um, Darktable is basically an Adobe Lightroom, like basically straight ripoff. Um, Darkroom, or sorry, Darktable, Lightroom, they, they pretty much ripped them off completely. But anyway, it's just a photo editor that allows you to edit raw photos um, and it's completely free. So that's like big plus, not paying like 20 or 50 bucks a month, it's just a free open source piece of software. Anyway, so I've got this, I've dragged in my one file so that Darktable kind of knows which folder to work with. It's gonna create these XMP files. Next thing I wanna do is I want to come exactly how I had it, and I like to go to kind, and I go and I look for all of my other raw files. So we obviously got the first one, date descending, and then I come down here and I drag for all of my raw files to go into Darktable. As you can see, we have all 400 of our images in here, which is really cool. And the nice thing about when I shot this time lapse was I did it in pretty much the brightest time of the day. So the exposure, although kind of underexposed, is consistent throughout. Normally in like a sunrise time lapse, I'd go to basically the brightest part of the time lapse, adjust that one image and then apply those settings to the rest, which is what we're gonna walk through right here. For this one, I'm going to just pick the first one, head on over into the dark room tab, and even here you can see just how underexposed it is. But I think I really saved those highlights in the clouds, so when we come in here and we bump up the exposure, suddenly we have just this really, really nice looking image. Wow, I am very pleased with how that looks. Honestly, we could probably go all the way there, I don't know, and I think we'll go to about there on the exposure, and then let's go back up here, let's add some contrast in to kind of stretch it a little bit further, and then really what I love doing, and this is what kind of makes for that professional high dynamic range, is we've got all of this detail in the sky and the clouds, now let's bump up those shadows too, and you get really the nice detail in, I mean, you can see that just come to life. Let's turn that off and turn that back on again. You can really see the detail in this entire scene really start to appear, and it looks awesome. I love doing that, and I mean, you can go so far with this. I mean, you could just have this crazy, weird-looking shadows flying up, but that looks just like a little too stylistic for me, so I think I'm going to dial it back just a smidge. I do want those shadows, but I don't want them quite that much, so I think I'm gonna go about right there, and I think that's pretty good, and really, honestly, with this time-lapse, I'm probably planning on cutting most 
most of this out anyway because we're going 16 by 9 um, i'll slice this in and i want to focus on the sky of course because the clouds as you guys will see looked awesome in this time lapse the only thing left to do is maybe a little bit of color correction i might add just a little bit of yellow i don't know not much just a little bit and then a little bit more blue into those shadows and i am just pleased with how that image looks. I am very happy with that image. Might turn the saturation up just a little bit just to really punch this thing through the ceiling. That is basically the one image that I like. Now I wanna take those adjustments basically and apply them to the rest of them. So what you do here now is you go to styles and as you can see here, I have these other styles that are in here which I'm actually going to delete because I don't want to get mixed up. I like to make a new style basically every time. And I go here and I hit create, and I'm going to just call this like, you know, clouds or whatever. I mean, I'm gonna just, I could just call it new style every single time because I pretty much just delete it every time. But then what I do is I go from here and then I go down to the bottom of all of these pictures and we select all of them. And then you just simply double click on that and it will apply the style to all of your images. Now again, keep in mind, this is a rather intense process. I'm amazed that it did that fast. Last time I had to go away for like five minutes and then it finally came back. But then as you guys can see, those bottom ones got the style and now if we go back up to the top, these should load as well. And we can see that now all of them have that really punchy, high contrasty style. And at this point, we are pretty much just about done. The next step, of course, is to export all of these. So I'm gonna go to the Select tab. I'm gonna go Select All, and then I'm going to go down to this Export, and I'm going to make a new folder for this. Um, guys, we are in wedding month. It is crunch time. It is getting seriously close to the wedding. Super pumped, though. So we're going to create this new folder right here, and this is where I'm going to select the output destination, do all of that, hit export, and then voila, we will start to see exporting 400 images. And of course, this usually takes a very long time as well. And we're back with another angle, got bored of shooting on the G9, so I decided to switch over to the GH5S. Images have all exported, so now I'm going to quit Darktable and let's open up that folder that we had. So for this next part, guys, I'm going to show you guys software that I use, which is Final Cut Pro, to do this last phase, which is not free, but that being said, the concept is all the same. All I'm doing is taking all 400 of these images and slamming them onto a timeline so that I can render it out as an MP4 or a video move whatever file. So I'm gonna be using Final Cut, but you guys could be using Shotcut, Caden Live, iMovie, it doesn't matter. Any video editor that I have used in the past, free or paid for, will definitely let you put a whole bunch of JPEG images on a timeline and then render it out. So that is what we are going to do. So let's make a new event called, um, we'll call this one, yeah, time lapse on here. And we have all of this, and then all I'm going to do, guys, is simply take all of these JPEG images, come over here, and just drag and drop them onto the timeline. And just as for Darktable, this could absolutely tank your computer again because you're just moving a ton of data to make this final product. Boom! So you can see, guys, this raw photo wasn't shot in 16 by 9, so we're going to crop in a little bit on that as well. But then really what I like to do is I like to do a Command A on all of these and then hit Control D for duration. I usually ballpark it and just do like, I think um, 0 0.02 and that really shrinks them down. And then from there I usually make a compound clip. So then I select all of these, new compound clip, we'll call it time lapse clip, which is exactly what it had. But then it's going to render this all out, and then ultimately I'm going to adjust the scale and the size. And then really when it's all said and done, this is what you get.
So guys, that is all I have for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making it. I am really nerding out on time lapses these days and I'm having a lot of fun shooting them, trying to find things that, you know, really just kind of enhance sort of the things that are slow and speed them up. Um, if you guys like this tutorial format, definitely let me know, I'll keep doing them. If you guys hate them, I'll just cut them out completely and we'll go back to dinging around with like making videos just for the fun of it. But I really like making these tutorials, so let me know what you guys think. Hope you learned something. And again, if you haven't used Darktable, Darktable is awesome. I need to do more tutorials with it really of just like editing pictures because it's completely free. And so far, anything that I've ever watched like Pete or um, I'm trying to think of other photography guys that I watch. Most of them are video guys, but anything that I watch like Pete do photography wise, you know, like certainly you can do with Darktable and it's been a lot of fun learning how to do it in Darktable. But anyway, you guys have a good morning, day, evening, night, wherever you are at. And as always, don't forget that creativity comes from constraint. Hit that like and subscribe button if you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. See you guys. What do I believe? What makes me feel it?